Hello! I want to talk about how harmonies and keys can paint specific moods in a piece of music. The piece I'd like to talk about is Recuerdos de la Alhambra and the A section, which is in the key of A minor. Now although we sort of analyze it as being in the key of A minor, uh, the music does shift through different keys, and that sort of paints an emotional journey into the music. Most, if not all, good composers will not just stay in one key for an entire piece of music. They'll shift through different keys, even if it's just temporarily. Sometimes it will be a really big shift for a long time. Sometimes it will be very momentary and fleeting. But in any case, the reason for these shifts of keys, shifts of tonalities, it's not just an intellectual game. It's really, it's, 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 that's the story. That's what tells the story of the music. It's through the changes in harmony and tonality. So the A section of Recuerdos de la Alhambra, I'm going to go through this at four measures at a time, and you'll see how each four measures is something very different. So the first four measures in A minor uh, establishes the, the piece in A minor, and it sounds like this. So let's begin by exploring what A minor can evoke. So in my book Fundamental Harmony I have some quotes for each key. And uh, for the key of A minor, I have pious womanhood and tenderness of character. And the second quote says expressive of tender womanly feeling, most effective for exhibiting the quiet melancholy sentiment of northern nations. A minor also expresses sentiments of devotions mingled with pious resignation. So what are the sort of takeaways, takeaway words of these? Because these, some of these quotes are very descriptive and um, sometimes it's good to just get a, uh, a sort of an adjective or two from these quotes. So here are some that I picked up on. One is uh, pious resignation, another is tenderness, and another is melancholic. So, um, pious resignation is maybe a little bit more abstract, but I think tender and melancholic are very strong words we can take action on. They can evoke emotions very easily. So, uh, tender and melancholic. So, I'm just, just by me saying those words, I want to play those four measures again, and I want to see if that transforms how I play it and how you perceive the music, just by saying tender and melancholic. So that changed it for me a little bit, but now I want to go into more detail. I want to be specific. A pious feeling suggests something serious, and could in this case refer to the Alhambra Palace. Resignation suggests not being in any hurry. This could translate in playing as a dark tone color and relatively slow tempo that doesn't push forward at all. So very steady, if, if not just even laying back uh, behind the beat. Tender suggests gentleness, so this could translate as an overall soft dynamic. And melancholic can suggest sobbing, which is implied by the accents in the bass line. This sobbing gesture can be brought out by leaning on those accents quite strongly, resting on them and giving them extra emphasis. So the accents I'm talking about, are they're, they're, they're indicated in the um, example, but just to play it, it's in the bass line. Kind of leaning into those bass notes really can give a so, sort of a sobbing or a sighing effect into the music. So with those more specific, um, that more specific information at hand, I'm going to try and apply that to the first four bars now. So dark tone color, slow tempo that doesn't push forward very, very, if not behind the beat, if anything, that's pious resignation. Tenderness um, is produced with an overall soft dynamic, sort of gentleness. Melancholic, 
is by bringing out those accents which are like sighing or sobbing. Okay, so there we go. That's how I can apply that information from the quotes specifically to those first four bars in A minor. So the next four bars shift to almost the complete opposite of the key of C major. C major being the relative major key. So C major, a pure, certain and decisive manner, full of innocence, earnestness, deepest religious feeling. Another says completely pure, its character is innocence, simplicity, naivety and children's talk. And the last says state of nature, virginal chastity and purity, lovely innocence of youth. With those quotes in mind, I'll play the C major, so the next four bars moves into C major. So pure, certain, decisive, innocence, simplicity, naivety. <laughs> can bring these out in a more specific way that was just me generally trying to evoke those emotions in my mind uh, so more specifically purity innocence and simplicity can be brought out by not adding much variation of dynamic color tempo that sort of thing so I'm just sticking to one sort of sound simple and then certain and decisive can be brought out with a louder dynamic and brighter tone color so I made the tone color a little brighter <laughs> compared to A minor, C major. Okay, so those are the differences, but that's just in the first eight bars. So the first four bars, A minor, the second four bars, C major. The next four bars move again, and now uh, it's, it's a bit even more fleeting. So F major, we go to F major for the first two bars, and the second two bars go to the dominant of A minor, uh, to E major. So F major, this is a beautiful quote um, here. So it's full of peace and joy, but also expresses effectively a light passing regret, a mournful but not a deeply sorrowful feeling, available for the expression of religious sentiment. Another quote says, clear and simple, free from all bitterness and melancholy. So this is where met to, these two quotes are a little, a little bit different from each other. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, not all pieces in F major are going to be, you know, exactly the same. The different pieces do have different tinges of emotions to them. I find the first quote really relevant here. Full of peace and joy, but also uh, light passing regret. So I'm going to play this next bit and see if those words evoke something in the music. <laughs> specific information so how can I specifically take the information and make something out of it so starting the phrase with peace and joy so I'm starting at forte with a sort of a sweet sweet tone color and then as the melody progresses I'm going to decrescendo and accelerate towards the ornament that ornament there okay so let's I'll give that another go So that's how I can evoke uh, light, peace and joy, and also light passing regret, which I think actually reflects the music really well. The next four bars move to D minor. So D minor expresses a subdued feeling of melancholy, grief, anxiety, and solemnity. Another quote says, a pensive key full of nobility and refined feeling. So again, we have two slightly different um, quotes here, and I find the first one to be uh, more appropriate for this example. So subdued feeling of melancholy, grief, anxiety, and solemnity. Mm -hmm. 
So in order to bring out this quote, um, this is a bit more straightforward. I'm just using a soft dynamic and a subtle decrescendo. So I'm going to do that one more time and apply that information. And the final four bars goes back to the key of A minor. tender and melancholic. Pious resignation too. I hope this has uh, given you some food for thought and maybe uh, ways of looking at the pieces you're playing and the, the, the harmony and the key changes with a very different sort of lens. Um, much more about painting the emotions. So in my book Fundamental Harmony I have quotes in not every single key because um, you know, keys like D flat major and A flat minor, they're not really used in guitar music um, at all, or well, very, very little. Um, so I, I stick with the keys that you tend to find guitar pieces in a lot. So up to uh, B major, which is five sharps, and um, in, in the flats uh, from E flat to F major, so that's from three flats. Uh, so you find, that's, there's still a lot of keys to, to go through, you know, major and minor in each key. So I hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for listening and uh, have a good one. Cheers.